uh, to your thought, Rod, and what's funny, I can relate totally. Like when you first start posting on social, even if you're comfortable, like, you know, Rod and I would turn to Brett and be like, Hey man, like it just took me an hour and a half to do that post. <laughs> like, is this what yeah, you yeah. do every day? Yeah. He's like, look, man, you'll get better. You know, just, and I'm like, perfect. And I can already see just I still the have training in, meals on. <laughs> yeah. You know, in the infancy say, say, so it was cool to hear you say, hey, I don't have a hack for that. It's literally just, it's reps, it's hours. And it's cool that you say, start with the problem. Like, Hey, what problems do you have? And then let the content go to work for you. Um, once you're given that value away, but I was going to ask you in your personal business, because like literally you, you seem like somebody that, that you're, you're living the 10 X rule, right? And I, I'm sure we'll get to that. Um, but your business has gone bonkers, but specifically to your business. And you mentioned referral partners, you mentioned your client base, you mentioned recruiting, where was the leverage point for you and what problem did it go? Okay. My, was it referral partners? Was it recruiting? Was it all of it kind of rising or was there a specific part you know, that really took off? I didn't really know what it was going to be when I first started doing it. I just started to, you know, get content out there, started to think, um, you know, how could I just provide some sort of value? You know, you hear this term value and you're like, oh, I got to put out value. Well, what is that? Like you just said, like value to who? Is it to these, this group or that group or this group? So uh, I was kind of just all over the place in the beginning just to see what, what would work and just started, you know, trying different ideas. Um, and then it just kind of occurred that most of the people were in the industry. Those are the people that are online the most. So while I do put out the consumer content still, I just started leaning more towards the industry content because those are the most active people in my audience. So I wanted to serve them. The other cool thing is it doesn't necessarily turn off the consumer if you're helping other people within the industry because they view it as, oh, this guy's a thought leader. Oh, he's, he's the teacher. I want to work with the teacher, not the student. You know what I mean? So, right. um, it kind of serves all goals. Uh, but you, you know, I, I've seen other guys in my space put out content and their content has been more towards, you know, people who are trying to buy their first home or, you know, their, their consumers and they, they got most engagement that way. So then they leaned in on that. So I think you just tried a few different things, see what works. You can see the analytics and see, um, where you're connecting, where you're not. The other cool thing is, um, uh, you know, when you talked about taking the time to take a post, I was the same way. It would like, I would write a caption and get this perfect picture and all this. And sometimes, you know, you can take the time to write really cool captions. It's almost like a blog post, right? right. Mm -hmm. But what I found also overall, those are good posts, but overall the value of a single piece of content has continued to decline, right? Uh, over time because of so much content coming at the, at the user. They're, it's like a fire hose. So in that mode, what's better, you know, is it consistency or is it, is it, is it quality or is it, um, volume, you know? And, uh, I, I just figured to be consistent, get a base level of quality and put out as much content as possible, make it like a machine. And if, and if you don't have the time, um, you know, do you have an extra few hundred bucks to hire a virtual assistant to help you post it? You can put all your ideas in a Google drive it's still you on the videos. It's still your voice. It's still your uh, caption that you wrote, but just have somebody repurpose this for you. It's not that expensive. And then now while we're here doing this podcast, I've posted three times because somebody here in the office is doing it right. Like the posts are already there. They just have to repurpose them and put them on different platforms for me. Then I can hop in and engage. Wow. I think that's super helpful too. And I, one thing you said a little bit ago is, is, kind of to further that point, as you said, you, you make it non-salesy. I, I, to me, that's like a, a big responder right there, right? It's like, I'm, I'm afraid, I, I shouldn't say afraid, but it's like, I'm, I'm cautious of coming off like I'm looking for something in, in the tone yeah, of yeah. my post versus, and I don't know, maybe you'd say that's a common thing with people that aren't as savvy as you, or maybe Brad or Taylor, which I, I don't put myself in that class, but the fact that something that you you're aware enough not to make something salesy, that is something I respond to. So I, I, I dig that you say that. Yeah. It's easy uh, to say it's kind of harder to do, but you, you kind of just have to take yourself out. Like do what I want to get from this or what are they going to get from this? Mm -hmm. And um, I know Brett did this thing recently. He did like a Q and a, I mean, it was a few months back. You got these really cool questions and you just answered every single one in your stories. And I was like, yeah, that's still serious because it shows you that, hey, people in my, even if it's a small audience, it doesn't matter, right? Uh, 
they still have questions. They still want to know stuff about you or, or your industry or whatever. And um, just answering those questions is valuable to them. And I used to think that content would be boring, but this is what people want. Like um, there's a guy I met who puts out financial hacks and financial advice and he's gone viral. Like this dude's getting, you know, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of uh, views daily based on just simple financial hacks. So it shows you that the consumer has questions about insurance, about real estate, about mortgages, about finance, and they want to learn. And Gen Z and millennials think that they can do everything themselves. They want to like Google it and figure it out themselves. So they, they want to learn this stuff, you know? So I think it's just a matter of answering their questions. You don't even have to put a call to action in a lot of the, in the informational content. You just put out the information or answer their question. Hmm. Yeah, that's super solid.